What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks. I'm your host, Marty. Today, we got a real, we got a championship version of this podcast coming to you with Deontay Wilder, 40 and 0. How late did you jump in? I jumped in at 21, and then I went to the Olympics. I met her in a year and a half. No one in history has ever done it as fast as I've done it. What made you want to jump in so late? Uh, solely because of my daughter. And my daughter was born with spina bifida. Most kids with this disorder are paralyzed. Um, and in wheelchairs, you know, the doctor said she would never be able to have a natural child ability or learning or ne- uh, never may be able to walk. But I tell people, go have something for you. She's what walking. Can. I mean, not only she's walking, she's running. She do what she wants. She, you know, she flips. You know, very smart, very intelligent teenager as how she, well. How she encouraged you to get into fighting? When she was coming, you know, it was all about money. I needed money. You yeah, know, I, I couldn't go to school for that. You know? Yeah, that's too much time. I need it now. I, I, yeah. fuck with, I know. <laughs> JG Whitworth is my money. I need it now. <laughs> oh. Exactly. You know, but it was it was it was crazy because I had a friend in college who was always talk about what we want to do in and out of life because you can always say what you want to do, but your action gonna speak louder than your words. At least it's supposed to. What was that learning curve for you to take your street fighting skills to become organized? Uh, yeah, organized. I, I consider it like organized because when you look at street ball, then you come from that, and then you turn like into and one to NBA. And like, there's you know not too saying? many people that go from and one to the NBA, though. Yeah, for sure. But you know, it's just a different caliber of a sport. You know, yeah. what I mean? ain't a lot of people talking about getting into boxing either. You know, it takes a a, a, a caliber uh, type of person to really just get involved in this. You know, some people can get through the workout, but can't get through the sparring. Some can get through the sparring, but can't do the workout. It's a it's a special type of person that can get through both. You have to be disciplined. You have to be. And have the to sport be. teaches you that. But yeah. it takes it takes time to develop yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Your skill, your mentality, the will is just to go in there. That's so what, when did you fight Olympic then? Like, I, was that the year and a half after you got into it? Yeah, after I got into it. You know, we uh, I got into it in 2000, late 2006. The Olympics trials was in 07. I made the team in 07. Competed in the 08 Olympics in Beijing, China. And uh, I uh, medaled and uh, turned pro soon soon after. So what was it like to go from Tuscaloosa to China, though? It was amazing. With, with, without boxing, man, I wouldn't be able to travel the world to see certain countries that I've seen. You know, yeah. this, this sport... It's a traveling sport. Yeah, it's global. Like, you know what I mean? It's worldwide. And, and, and um, that's the blessing part about it. That's why I say I, I, I kind of regret going through school and not learning, learning certain languages or taking it serious. Yeah. Once you start traveling the world, you realize how small the world, oh, is, how small where you come from actually is and yes. how much the world has to offer. You know, with me, I always had that feeling like I yeah. can't work for nobody. Yeah. You know, I need to, it is for myself. I feel like, like as a boxer, you have to be an, entrep- you have an entrepreneurial spirit. God's to. Because yeah. you, you working for yourself, like you, you put your team together. Yes. You, know, you got to make this business decisions, who you want to fight, how you want to fight people, when you're going to fight. Like It's all about managing yourself and your career. You got to put a team around you to make sure that you're able to do so, right? Uh, most definitely, most definitely. But, you know, even with that, it's levels in boxing as well. You know, uh, different, you know, uh, signing with promotions and stuff. Because when you sign with a promotion, they really have more say-so than you. One thing I wanted to talk to you about is preparing to fight. Not just like just a boxing match, just preparing to fight at whatever it is that you want to do in life. Mm. And I think a lot of things that you do as a boxer to prepare to beat a opponent is the same thing a lot of people could do to def- defeat any obstacle in their life. Like, how do you go into preparation to fight wherever it is that you're going to fight against? For me, I use meditation with visualization. You know, mm. being able to see myself do something, being able to see myself run this course and to memorize it. And so when it actually happened in reality, it's almost like it's cheating. So I, like, as I've been there before, like I tell my, my opponents, like I fought you 75 times. I fought you 100 times. Like my last fight, I told my opponent, I fought you 100 times. Yeah. That's how many times I visualized me knocking you out in certain type well, of your, ways. Your meditation periods must be short because you be knocking motherfuckers out in the first round. <laughs> all, right, I'm, all right. All right. All right. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I got this one. <laughs> but the saying, I don't get paid for overtime, though. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. I get you don't get paid for overtime. Just like you said with the jerseys, just enough. It's just a, yeah. you know, same jersey. With me, I don't get paid for overtime. We're going to get that. What's on that contract? 
no matter if it's first round or 12 rounds, you getting that. And then just having the mindset to speak and believe and receive. I always say I speak things in existence. The belief is the water that grows your plant. And once you speak it out and you plant that seed into the universe, Amen. it manifests. Amen. My so I'm walking in my manifestation right now. What's your favorite part of being a dad? Man, uh, everything about it. Everything about just being able to wake up and see them so happy, being able to see them mature and learn certain things of the world, you know, just to instill in them what I want them to learn, the knowledge mm-hmm. that I want to instill in them. Because we all know that these books that they're studying and they go into, that they teach them the wrong things sometimes, especially in history. You know, a lot of people yeah, they still teach, believe They teach the white Columbus. man's history. Come on, man. You make me get up. <laughs> I think about, like, kids, though, is like, as much as we could teach them, but more so what they teach us. Mm. The way my daughter looks at the world, I try to be more like her mm. and be less like me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Because the way she sees things and the way she maneuvers yeah. is the right way. You know, I'm big on you know, allowing my, my kids to understand where you came from. When I grew up, it was, it was different. We grew up poor. We yeah. didn't have many things, you know. I didn't have the finer clothes or the finer shoes. Like, yeah. I teased and picked on all the time because everybody had, you know, Nikes or Air Force on. I had USA Today's. They were still white. I had to, I had to, <laughs> I had to play basketball on some Sonic Hedgehog Sega Genesis one time. Bro, I had to play in some Sikonis football one time. They oh, still, man. man. Back in high school, they used to call me Sikonis because oh, when well. I catch the ball, like, I'd be like, <laughs> you know, like, damn, not have no grip. This motherfucker all over the you place. Got have strong Snippet, feet. Man, well, I was determined. <laughs> to get in that zone, you know yeah. what I'm saying, that end zone. But, you know, all those things, that it just it just prepared me, you know, yeah. mentally and physically and emotionally, you know, to endure the things that I go through now. You, you have to educate yourself on money. That's the biggest thing because we come from an environment where we don't know about money. Yeah. Right? Our family talk about making a dollar stretch. You can't make a fucking dollar stretch. Yeah. <laughs> you stretch a dollar, it's just going to rip in half. A dollar is still a dollar. If you put a quarter here, quarter here, quarter here, quarter here, it don't matter where the four quarters are stretched out to, it's still a fucking dollar. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you have to educate yourself on money. Like, mm. I didn't know shit about taxes. When I got my signing bonus, I thought they took all the taxes out. They got hit by four months later. I had to write a check. Ooh, woo. For like 90 grand or something mm. for taxes. Now I'm just like, like what, is what, this? What, what, what you mean? I gotta write the check? Yeah. But that's the thing, they don't teach you in school. They, they don't, don't teach you teach. the valuable, the, the life the skills real shit you need in school, bro. No, they don't teach you no life skills. <laughs> you know what I mean? You go to school, schools to learn how to be social. The whole thing is like, I think in the community is about seeing the possibilities. Correct. Most right? Definitely. We know that you can hoop. Yeah. It's been proven. Mm. Like, we know you can play football. Mm. It's been proven. Film director? Yeah. No, how many people around you you know that's a film director? Not too many. I can count on my hands. Yeah, writer? Count on my finger. Yeah, a writer, writers, you know, poets, like, yeah. you know, scientists, you know, magicians. Like, it's just, it don't matter. Like, all those possibilities, like, we don't get introduced to as a young age. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. We have to learn on the way. You know, but that would make you stronger as well, too, when, when you don't have the resource and you obtain it, like you said, with yourself, self-educating yourself and, and not really do this school system. Because I don't believe in that as well either, yeah. you know, because they're not teaching the appropriate things that they need to teach to yeah. us. You know what I mean? It's always the hand-me-down textbook. I don't think it's the teacher's fault, though. Mm. I think it's the government's fault. Mm. You want to pour water and you want to be a bucket filler, mm. not a bucket dipper. Mm. I just I learned this from my daughter. Come on. She called me a bucket dipper one day. Really? And I was like, what's a bucket dipper? She's like, well, there's bucket fillers and bucket dippers. Bucket fillers are when you do good for other people, and a bucket dipper is when they take something or do mm. something bad to you. Man. And I was just like, you know what? Yeah. The world is full of bucket dippers. You want to pour into others. Mm. A lot of people just want people to pour into well, them. Damn. And it's a bad habit of that. And people won't understand why they don't make it or whatever, you know, and then they want to hate on others. That's a bucket filler. Yes. You know what I mean? You can make me go back with that. You be a bucket filler. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm learning that's something. Kid, that's pre-K. You know what, you know what I'm saying? saying? That's yeah. kindergarten right there. Every single kid's an artist. Mm. Like, every kid likes to. They're going to come up with something. Or the creativity of their mind. So if know? every kid is an artist, but every adult isn't. Mm. So that's why I would say the creative adult is the child that survived. Because you can give a child a payment, draw me something, they can come up creativity and draw, like you said, being an artist or whatever. And as an adult, we can say, draw something. Well, what you want me to draw? I don't know what to draw. Yeah. You can't, I, out of all these things, you can't come up with something. I think it's important for kids of color to read fiction because a lot of stuff that we're given in are harsh realities. All our shows, all our books are too much yeah. like our reality. Right? But when you I have fiction, 
you get to visit worlds, so that, which makes you believe that your world doesn't have to be the way that it is, mm. right? So I like to paint things in that way. And a lot of times I use my daughter as a muse in a lot of these paintings because my number one task is her. Mm. Like, I work with a lot of kids, but my number one kid that I have to work with is my daughter. Right. So I like to paint her in all these magical situations. Everyone has greatness. Mm. You no, know, greatness is only determined by service. Oh, so wow. So you keep applying that service to her, Nigga, this she's going to be great. Nigga. You know what I mean? Just like our father. You Shit. know what I'm saying? I appreciate keep that. Keep applying service. Keep applying the service. You know, we all great in our own ways. How do you knock a motherfucker out? Because I just, sometimes, you know, I just be out there. I get in moments where I just want to, I don't want to just, like, sometimes it's like, I just want to knock this motherfucker out. Yeah. So what's the art of the knockout? Like, you've knocked motherfuckers out all the time. Yeah. Except for that one time. Well, I still got him in the second time, though. It was even worse. You know? <laughs> what happened there the first time, though? You the first, could... Well, the first time was a blessing in disguise, though, because a lot of people at that point in time, I was, what, 32 and 0. Getting to that stage, you know, people was, oh, he can't take a punch. He can't box. He can't go around. It's always he can't, he can't, he can't, he can't. Yeah. I always go by the saying... Um, let's talk more action. Words yeah. is only half percent of action. Yeah. Let's talk more action. I b- I'm a believer in sh- showing you. You know, that's why I'm, uh, you know, I be so bold. I speak so freely. You know, I tell people I speak from my heart, and my mouth is only the translator to what my heart is trying to say. So mm. sometimes that can be very strong. Nigga, you a walking just, proverb. Man, just. <laughs> just <laughs> With that fight, I had to show the world. Not only I'm just all about a, a, a right hand, but I could box as well, too. And I beat him to an inch of his life. But I told him I would beat him to an inch of his life. I spoke it, I believed it, and I received it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And with that being said, with this fight come December 1st at the Staples Center, you can't make it click that button, Showtime pay-per-view. You know, just putting that promotion out there. <laughs> <laughs> You got the same scenario where um, a guy grew up in a boxing family. He's a boxer, and I'm a puncher. With this fight, I'm going to have to show the boxer that I'm going to whoop your ass, and then I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to tenderize you. I'm going to marinate you. <laughs> you know. Before I put you on the grill. <laughs> Leave him over that nigga done. He you know. done. Hey, who wants some? You know. And then I'm going to lay you out. <laughs> 